So today is pretty exciting because we are having a day in our food forest. So we have literally had a week of solid rain or six days at least since I was filming for my last video. But today we have got a beautiful day and so me and Dan are gonna get into the food forest and give it a really good tidy up and sort out so that we can plan and make space for where we're gonna put some new stuff into the food forest for this year, which we are really excited about. And generally just have a little bit of a de-bramble and just sort a few bits out. But the bramble gives you free food, I can hear you all saying, and isn't that what you want in the food forest? And the answer to that is yes, we do to a point. But this whole area used to be just thick with bramble and gauze uh, before we planted this food forest in 2019. And where it is still young and we're still trying to form the canopy layer of this area, we have to intervene a little bit more than hopefully we will in the long term just to give um, everything a chance because otherwise the bramble and the gauze will just take back over. Dan is already getting stuck into removing bramble and gauze from this top area. So we do unfortunately have to dig out a lot of the roots of the gauze and the bramble still, otherwise they just keep coming back. But probably for this open area up here, we're gonna put down a few more bags of wood chip um, once we've finished over the areas that we've dug just to try and cover the surface again before the plants um, get to come in and do their job. We mainly grow autumn raspberries because we find that they crop better overall and they take less care. The ones I'm pruning here are summer raspberries and I'm just cutting out the dead canes because this will give them more space and help them fruit better. But overall, the autumn raspberries always give us a much better crop. So I'm actually just going to get the mower and mow all the paths back in place around the plants because then we'll know where we don't need to dig the bramble and gauze up from because I'll just keep mowing them off in those places. Folks, if you are enjoying this video and seeing our food forest, can we please ask you to just stop for a moment and click the thumbs up button just below the video and also leave us any comments or questions or just drop us a piece and plants down in the comments box so that we know who's watching. We're really working hard to grow our channel and get our videos seen by more people that we can hopefully inspire to grow more food for themselves. And by you doing these things for us, it really helps to get our videos out there more. So in the food forest, we have both comfrey and green elkanet. And both are in the same family and have similar um, properties and benefits, particularly for the soil. But this one here is actually green elkanet. And the flowers are slightly different to comfrey and the shape of the leaf is slightly different. Um, now we're happy to have them both in here, but the alkanet does have a tendency to spread a little bit more. 
even though the comfrey I have is the seeding variety, which again, I'm really happy to have because I would be fine with a carpet of comfrey just to mow and keep feeding the soil with. But yeah, the Elkinet, um, I do try and keep under control a little bit more. So what I'm actually gonna do is, every time I see it starting to flower is just chop and drop the Elkinet. And because I'm mowing without the catcher on, I'm probably just gonna mow, uh, run the mower over some of this and then just let it fall around this apple tree and give it some nice food. So Dan is actually just thinning out this jostaberry bush that we've got because we've been finding that it just root layers and expands like crazy. And last year it was actually completely swamping this small um, Braeburn apple tree just behind it. So yeah, that's why we're taking some action and reducing the jostaberry back to just like its main stem really for this season. So all of this here is actually a big patch of chocolate mint and it has slowly been creeping over to where all of our rhubarb is and I've been meaning to get in and clear this patch up all winter because it is also slowly being invaded by all of this bramble that's coming in from under the flax as well. So this is going to be my next job for today. This smaller clump of rhubarb here was actually completely swamped by bramble and all of the mint. So I've cleared the mint back a little bit from around it to try and give its crown a little bit more space to grow. But I'm not really sure if that is the best thing to do or not because this big clump here and here seems to be growing up quite happily with all the mint right close in around it. And I would probably rather have the mint than the sorrel creeping in, but hopefully neither one will actually strangle the plant and it will still be able to grow on its own. So yes, yeah, so I've given it a bit of space anyway, but we'll just keep an eye on it all now and see. But the smell in here cleaning this up is just amazing. And I think this chocolate mint has a particularly nice smell to it as well. We've got another mint over this side, um, a pineapple mint, which it's nice. I don't like it as much as this chocolate mint, but it doesn't smell the same. It's got a really different smell to it. So yeah, love this one. And one of the nice things about having this clear up first today is that it's given me a much better idea about where some of the new plants that I've got to go in will be best suited. Like for example, up here, um, I'm gonna put a lot more Mediterranean type herbs in where this is like a full sun sort of open area that won't going forward have so much of a canopy as the rest of our food forest. And where Dan sort of disturbed the soil a bit, digging some of the bramble roots out, um, I'm just gonna use some of this space to plant some of um, the new things that I've got to go in. And yes, I think this here, this will be a nice little Mediterranean herb bed in the middle and then we can still have a footpath either side. But yeah, herbs is something that I'm actually going really big on this year in the food forest, particularly medicinal herbs. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be sharing more with you about that. It's probably going to be tomorrow now because We've had quite a big session in here today. Our backs are starting to ache a little bit from all the bending forward and pulling stuff out. So yeah, I think I'm gonna save the planting for tomorrow now.
we had an apple tree in this position last year and it got the bacterial canker and it was slowly dying back. So we made a decision to change that one this year. Um, in its place, um, we did get another apple tree, but we didn't want to put another apple tree in here just in case that can spread to it. Um, so instead I have a nice plum tree here and I got this from a local garden center actually, it was only like eight pounds. Um, this variety, Opal, we've already got it, but I wanted to just use it basically as a nice rootstock to graft a new variety from, which I've grafted onto here, um, from one of the local jobs we go to where we maintain the gardens. Um, it's a really nice, massive, juicy plum. We don't know what variety it is, but Nevertheless, if it works, it's going to be epic. Um, I'm hoping that the canker can't spread from apple trees to plums, um, but if you know about that kind of stuff, do let us know in the comments below. So let's get this bad boy in. And we got this actually bare root, which is one of the reasons it's so cheap. And if I buy them bare root and I'm not quite ready to plant them, I often just put them into a small pot like this until we're ready. So the roots aren't going to fill it up just yet, but let's get it as loose as possible. There we go. And it always amazes me, I've said it before, but how they cut all the roots off these and within the first year, um, they establish so amazingly, which yeah, just nature impresses me every year more and more. So that's pretty good. The rootstock here, that this was originally grafted to is at this point down here. Um, so I want to keep that join there above the soil line. Otherwise we may risk getting loads of uh, suckers from the original rootstock, which won't be the variety that our final tree will be. And that's the rootstock right there you can see. So I'm keeping that above the soil line. It's just such a beautiful paradise day to be doing some forest gardening today. So I'm so happy. And this tree is in now. So last thing to do, give it a little water and then I can check over the next month if these grafts have taken. If they haven't, then there's no loss. I can either leave it as the original tree, which will sprout in the buds below it, or I can have another go next year. I'm focusing a lot on herbs in the food forest this year and today I've got quite a lot of Mediterranean um, culinary herbs but in the polytunnel I've also got some other stuff which I'll, I will show you in a minute um, and I've got some other herbs and uh, more medicinal herbs coming on in there too but yeah so we've got some uh, lavender two different lavenders and yeah it suddenly dawned on me this year that we didn't have any lavender in the food forest and that's kind of crazy because lavender is amazing for bees and other insects it smells amazing as you will all know and again it's also got um, many uses medicinally and just for fragrance as well so lavender adding lavender to the food forest now um, rosemary, I've also got some cuttings of rosemary growing on in the polytunnel so we'll probably dot a few more of those around. Um, our perennial kales that you may have seen me rooting in just a couple of videos ago have actually started um, showing roots underneath already from just a few weeks growth so I'm going to pop a couple more of the perennial kales in. I've got oregano and sage and some winter savoury, which I've not grown that before. Um, horseradish, because I always use horseradish in my fire cider brew. And I have got a few different horseradish plants dotted around. And from what I've been told, horseradish is meant to kind of be quite invasive, but I can never find enough when it comes to brewing the fire cider. So I've actually got two more plants of horseradish to put in because again you can never have enough time 
and I think that one's tarragon isn't it yeah French tarragon again that's not a herb I've grown before but I love using herbs in cooking and also like I say in my fire cider and then something that we're really excited about learning and trying are these and this is known as a Chilean guava um, by one of its names and I believe it's a small evergreen shrub which produces an edible berry so yeah so I'm going to get planting some of this now and I'll also show you what else I've got in the polytunnel too So I've just placed 11 of the plants around the food forest where I think they will be suited and I've had to remember the number so that I don't miss planting any of them and then the remainder of the um, herbs which are mainly Mediterranean ones I'm going to create a little herb garden in the middle of this full sun top area in our food forest here. We've also got another honeyberry to plant, which I almost forgot about, which we need as a pollination partner to our other beautiful honeyberry bush that we've got, which is an absolutely beautiful shape, but it hasn't produced us any fruit as of yet. And we think it is because it needs pollination partners. So I'm going to put that one in today as well. And once we've got all of the plants in the ground in here today, I will come back round and give them all a mulch with some wood chips. So hopefully the ground is going to be soft enough down here at the lower end of the food forest, because when I come to use this horseradish, it's going to be the roots that I'm obviously going to be digging up. I think it should be okay. There's a good few inches of nice composty layer where we had this all completely wood chipped to start with. And I know the ground is really wet at the moment, but it's, um, it's quite nice and loose down there. So yeah, hopefully that'll be good. And this was all solid orange clay here. And you can see that even the clay um, layer where it goes from like a compost mulch layer to the clay even the top um, layer of the clay is going quite nice and dark now which is amazing and that's one of the massive benefits of mulching with either compost or wood chip Beautiful. I'm mad excited about these Chilean guavas. Laurie got me. They're a variety called Capal. And she went all out because she knows I like to go big on things and got me a pack of six of them. So, so excited. Apparently, they taste like a mixture. Well, they look like a blueberry, but they taste a little bit like wild strawberries. Um, and I've heard other people describe them with kind of other tastes as well so yeah very excited to see how they get on so it's gonna have a lovely home here in our food forest and then I've got three more scattered around the land elsewhere so hopefully in time you see these fruit in and we'll do a taste test on them as well and I almost forgot about these two Shizandra vines that I've had in pots for a couple of years and Shizandra is a climbing berry, which is actually an adaptogen. So it works really well in the body. And I actually brought four of these plants a couple of years ago. And I planted two out into the food forest um, 
must have been probably this time last year and initially they were growing on really well but either the drought got to them or um, the voles may have eaten away at the roots because all of a sudden they just died off towards the back end of last season. Um, so yeah, fortunately I had a couple in pots because they're quite a um, rare plant to get hold of. Um, so I'd held a few back. So I think I'm actually gonna put the bigger one in here um, to ideally eventually climb up this plum tree. And we'll probably take this cover off later on this year um, and I'll just give it some temporary sticks to help it train it upwards. Um, but one of the reasons why I think I'm gonna put it in here is because we've actually got a patch of mint here. And I think I've read somewhere that voles don't like mint. So just in case it was the voles, that will hopefully help it. And yeah, then this one, I might just keep it in a pot for a bit longer um, and keep it safe just in case. I've got a few more fun things in here that are still growing on that I'll be adding to the food forest either later on this year or some even next year as well. So in here I've got a tray of herbs which is mostly going to be for the food forest. Two of them that I'm really excited about is called Skull Pit and Skull Cap. And these are both Karmatif medicinal herbs, which I'm trying this year. And then I've also got some St. John's wort coming on from seed here. It's still quite small. And I've actually got some oregano, even though I've just bought two pots of oregano, I kind of forgot that I was bringing it on from seed um, when I got excited when I was herb shopping. And then I've also got German chamomile to go in the food forest. This, the, the German chamomile is the one that you drink in teas. And then I've got some lovage, which I haven't grown before. And then I've just got some more uh, Sherville here, which I love to dot around um, and let that just self seed. And it's creating quite a nice carpet in the food forest already. And then over here, I've got some more asparagus, which we've grown from seed. And we have got some asparagus in the food forest already, but we are hoping to put a lot more along the fence line as you walk in through the gate um, because we think that would look really nice how it just sort of blows around in the wind as it grows big. And this one here is the herb skull cap, which I've just noticed today has started germinating in some of these cells. Another little bit here. So yeah, really looking forward to trying this herb. This is one that I'll probably look at tincturing. And all of these here are trays that I sowed at the end of March. And all of this here is edible lupins, which I'm super excited about because I actually bought the seed last year and they didn't germinate very well. So this year I've actually got much better success with germination and I'm going to grow the plants on a little bit and then plant them out. So I think when I bought these seeds, one of the reasons why I got the edible lupins was obviously one because they're edible for the food forest. But I think if I remember rightly that lupins are also a nitrogen fixer as well. And speaking of nitrogen fixers, I've got something else over here that we're hoping to add. Um, it probably might not be to next year, but hang on, I'll just show you. So over here, they're not actually looking as good as they were. Over here, Dan has been bringing on some acacia seeds. And acacia are really beautiful, wispy, leafed trees that are actually nitrogen fixers. So they grow quite fast, but we won't be able to plant these out until next year. But yeah, hoping that there'll be another addition to the food forest. I think we might get some more seeds started though, just to make sure that we get a good few trees to pop in there. And then the other thing which I did show in my last video that I'm hoping to add to the food forest is some of Dan's bananas. And unfortunately these won't be added for fruit, but they will make a great biomass. So they'd be really good for chopping and dropping or for using as plates. And they still look amazing and beautiful and give something back.
So there we go, that is my little Mediterranean herb garden planted at the top of our food forest. And I've also popped all the other plants in now that I showed you earlier. So we'll be adding the ones from the polytunnel soon as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we're up to in our food forest and how we're getting it ready for the growing season ahead and all the beautiful new things that we're adding in here. Probably in a week or so's time, we'll do our first tour video of the year in the food forest because you can literally see day by day now more and more stuff is slowly coming back to life and it's getting really exciting in here. So we will share more with you on that really soon. If you've enjoyed the video today, please click the thumbs up button and please leave us a comment down below, even if it's just a piece and plants so we know that you're there because this really, really helps us to grow our channel and get our videos seen by more lovely people just like you. We'll catch you here again soon, folks. Peace and plants.